Hi, I'm Nurse Huckleberry, and today I'm gonna make some beef heart tartar. Salsa inglesi. I know that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, tartar is raw beef chopped up real fine, and then you mix it with mustard and Worcestershire and pickles and onions, and you just put it all together and you put egg yolk on top, and it's delicious. Most of the time you use filet, but filet is overrated, and very expensive. And you know what's better? Heart beef heart specifically. It's very nutritious. It has a ton of flavor to it. It's also way, way cheaper than filet and equally as tender. So we need to get some beef heart, which means we gotta go to the store, but not any store. We're going to the Argentinian market. The one across town? They have beef heart. It's like five o'clock. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be great. Tell them Bart. So it's a new store? Not new, it's different though. We've been there before. We have, Chad hasn't yet. Oh uh, yeah, that's the stuff. We're at Catalina's Market. This is Argentinian slash South American specialty market. It's got all sorts of cool stuff in here, but they have beef heart consistently, and that's what we're after. It only took us a 30 minute drive to get over here. One of jalapenos. It's Worcestershire, but it's salsa inglesia. Salsa the English. <laughs> that is some honking ginger. Hey, can I get a snack? Yeah, what are you gonna get? Hello, tea dog! <laughs> They're making me empanadas fresh. <clears throat> How's the sun treating you? It's, it's treating me. So we ended up here anyway, huh? You need something else, not for the video, okay? We're just out and about already. Oh, come on. Can I get another snack? No, can I have a snack this time? You got freaking four empanadas. We could both get a snack. <laughs> There's one ice cube tray choice. Like, who wants that? Blue? It's a two-pack. What you got there? My snack. I'm gonna have beans on toast. Right, put it in the basket. All right, first things first, chopping. We need onion. Pickles, that mushroom, and that mushroom. Basically everything, just cut it up real small. So tartar, I feel like a lot of people are very apprehensive of it. In reality, as long as you're using decent quality meat, you can do beef tartar with most meats. Scratch that, not most meats, most cuts of beef. However, the best ones are very tender. Oh gosh, this is a potent onion. Ooh, it's already got me crying. <laughs> Now, one of the benefits of heart, I mean, it's tartier. It's got, it's got a very rich taste, but the heart is just a big muscle. So when we get to it, it's not like liver, where liver tastes like really irony. It does have a slightly more intensely iron taste to it, but it's more like beefy. I would say it's like if you took two fillets and smushed all the flavor of the two fillets into one fillet, it's like a concentrated flavor. It was a very dense muscle, but because it's not like super long muscle fibers, they're not very tough. This is also one of those dishes that seems really impressive and actually you don't have to like really cook very much. So they just, uh, you know, just looks cool. You don't have to cook anything. Yeah, exactly. We're not cooking anything. All right, add my mushrooms to the pile. And then I'm gonna chop up my pickle, Ingrand. which normally I would go for like gherkins, like cornichons, the little ones. But we already have these. Not only do we not have gherkins, which I knew we didn't have gherkins. I just decided not to buy them because we had other pickles. We don't have capers, which I really thought we had capers. So we're gonna have to figure out a substitute for that. It'll be fine. Be fine. I don't need all those pickles you want. Give me some. You want some pickle? I a pickle. <laughs> Are you still eating the pickle? I don't know how it. What's next? Wait. Uh. <laughs> Is that a whole heart? Well, yes. 
Normally, I don't buy the whole hearts. Normally, I buy half a pound, but they didn't have any prepped. So when we asked the guy if he had heart, he was like, oh yeah, let me get you some from the back, hold on. And then just comes out with this and he's like, is this okay? And we're like, I guess. Yeah, he's like, did you want more? <laughs> is that what he asked? Yeah, he wasn't asking if we wanted less, he was asking if we wanted more. <laughs> hilarious. That's why you're like, oh, no, no, no. Love. Mi corazón. My heart. It beats for beef. It lasts for you. It bleeds a lot. It's a bleeding heart. This is way more than we're gonna use right now. Don't worry, it's not gonna go to waste. I'll just freeze a portion of it and then we'll use it in another time. But beef heart's also really good cooked. You just have to be careful not to overcook it because it does get tough if you overcook it. Also, I love how inexpensive it is. It's like $3 a pound, which right now everything's so expensive. $3 a pound is magical. Ew. Look away, Duder, look away. This is pretty cleaned, which is pretty nice. Could be worse. Could definitely be worse for preparing the heart. I'm gonna pat them dry. All right, to keep people from getting woozy, I've <laughs> put the rest of the meat away. But as you can see, if you're not thinking about it as being hard, if you're thinking about this as any other cut of meat, it's an incredibly lean meat. It's nice and deep, rich, full of nutrients, full of flavor. And you can see it's so tender. This is not a very sharp knife, okay? And all throughout, this is why I love hearts so much because it's delicious and just so cheap and just a great high quality protein. So I highly recommend incorporating heart. It just tastes like beef. So I'm cutting off the sinew from the outside of the heart. And then really there's not a whole lot of trimming that you need to do. It's just getting rid of this and some of the structures on the inside. This is like what makes up, you know, the valves and so you can cut that bit off. And then really that's it. That's all the trimming you need to do. And then boom, look at that, beautiful. I really think that people sleep on heart and they're just like so weirded out by it. And I tried it while working in a pretty fancy restaurant. It was marinated and cooked very, very lightly, but it was so good. And then when I learned that you could use it for tartare, I was like, well, well, you know, let's try that. Especially that was during COVID when uh, we were stuck at home and our exciting outings were excuses to go to the grocery store. So we just started going to weird different grocery stores and found this one. And then really it's just more chopping. This looks just about enough. You know, beef tartare isn't one of those things that you eat large quantity of. It's a very rich dish. I feel like I definitely eat less tartare than I would of like steak. All right, let's do one of these. We're just gonna try and get everything same size. You want it quite fine. This will have a little bit more of a slight bounce to it. Mm. I really don't like when tartare, it just feels like ground beef in your mouth, like super mushy. That last place that we had tartare at, it was super mushy and just ugh. And super expensive. Cause what, that tartare for a tiny amount was like- $28. Yeah, $28 for it was less than this. And this is like, like a, $2. It's like a sixth of the heart. I didn't need that part. Are you concerned about the raw beef? Cause I'm gonna be eating it. That looks pretty good. And we're just gonna whoop, little whoop whoop. So I have decided we got this. Okay, maybe not this herb. What does it taste like? Oh. I don't wanna, no, just describe, I don't care. I don't wanna taste it. I don't know how to describe it. Uh. That doesn't taste like it smells at all. <laughs> It's so bitter. Never mind. It's a good flavor though. Yeah. Some of that might be good in there. I don't know. Maybe just that much. Maybe that much can go in there. I really wanted it to taste more like it smells, and it doesn't taste like it smells like at all. Okay. Well, I've got some tarragon. I guess we'll put tarragon instead. Tarragon does not taste like capers. It tastes like tarragon. But if you have capers, you could put capers. Capers just <laughs> taste like pickles. I mean, they do. They have their own distinct taste. But yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of herbs.
That didn't work. Hey! I like a little horseradish in mine. Gives a little bit of a kick. Just a little bit. You left the bottle empty, naked, and afraid. And the fucking fly still is in here. I thought Bert was gonna take care of that fly. Yeah, Bert, where are you? All right, generously season. Generously season. We're gonna do a little mixy mixy. My onion to meat ratio is a bit off. It's too much onion. Hmm, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Use a little more salt. I always recommend you gotta taste your food. Taste it throughout. See what it needs. You know? Every onion's a little different. You never know if it's gonna be real potent or not. You know, if you need more, you need less. If it needs more salt. I want more mustard. Other mustard. Oh yeah, now I can smell the mustard. Mm-hmm. What's doing it? It's freaking fly. My breads. We don't have a toaster, so this is how we make toast. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, nurse. Oh my god, you're so fancy. Your ring mold? These are English muffin molds. Nobody even has those anyway, though. I do, because homemade English muffins, especially gluten-free English muffins, are delicious. Remember, babe? I cooked them for you. Multiple times. Yeah, they're good. I should make those again. They're very tasty. All right, here we are. You ready for the grand reveal? That's a lie. I was just joking. Please don't come for me, chefs. No, come, chefs. Come. Dude, I don't do that. Those chefs show up. I'm gonna treat them just like that lady at the grocery store. Oh, you think you can leave your cart behind my car? No. No. Yeah, you tell them. The bread's done, okay? Let's just... <clears throat> All right. And then I got some quail eggs. Whoosh. Look how pretty. Those are very pretty. This one and this one. Those are both very cool. So which one are you gonna crack open? Hmm, good question. Make a little spot for it. That's where it's gonna go. This one's cracked, so I guess we'll go with this one. Probably cracked because it got stuff put on top of it. You using a tiny knife? Yeah. <laughs> how come you can't just crack it like a regular egg? They have a really tough membrane. So you're more likely to break the yolk than to get it open. Let me just finish with a little salt and pepper. If I had microgreens, I'd put microgreens on it, but I don't. But I think that about does it. That's real pretty. All right, so now we just gotta mix it up and give it a little taste. Oh yeah. I know it sounds really scary and daunting, but Mmm. It tastes delicious. It's got a really intensely rich flavor. The bright onions are crispy. I love mustard, so like it really highlights the beef. The egg yolk brings some creaminess. It's really quite good. I do kind of wish I had capers. Do you want to try? Yeah. Mmm. That was good, right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's tough. You have a nice time, Bert. Thank you so much for joining us today. Tell me, have you had tartare? Are you afraid of tartare? Does it concern you? If you've had beef tartare, are you interested in trying heart tartare? Are you interested in trying heart at all now that you've seen it in action? Bert, I'm trying to do the outro right now. He's like making love, not just the camera, but the cameraman. What are you doing? Bert, what are you doing? Did I spill something on my pants? <laughs> Get that back. Anyways, let me know if you try it. I know I didn't give really any measurements, you know. Measure with your heart. And if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. It helps the channel a lot. And subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to see more content, you can catch us live over on twitch.tv slash Nurse Huckleberry, where we do a live comedy cooking show three days a week. Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. Boom! So, go check that out. Otherwise, we'll see you next Monday. Okay, bye! Say bye, boy!